So, so um, I, I wanted a cigar, you know. So I said to the gal out there at the desk, I said, where can I get a cigar? You know where there's any? She says, oh, I don't think that. She says, down, and the guy came up and he says, there's a place down on 32nd. And we're on 44th here, okay? 32nd, um, McDonald, a little place. And I said, okay. I mean, what the heck? It was a nice day. I mean, and, uh, so I took a walk. And I walked, walked, walked. Well, these are long blocks. <laughs> it was 85 degrees. And I was getting pretty cool. And I'm looking across the street and I see some buses go by. And I'm thinking, you know, I think I'm going to take a bus back. <laughs> I'm going to make this walk all the way back. And, and, I, and I finally got there. And, I, and it's a, a, off the beaten path. Uh, you, you have to get off of McDonald's and go down about just a little bit, but it's kind of in a, you know, not so cool area. And, uh, and as I'm walking in, I notice that there's a cab parked out in front with a couple of people sitting in it. Not the driver, but a couple of people, and they were kind of, it was just not a, I don't know how to explain this, but she's not, this is not a, I'm going to get in here and get my cigar and get out of here, you know. I walk in, and these, there are three black gentlemen who are in there, and they turn around and look at me, and then nobody says a word. And they're like, I said, hello? And they, yeah. I said, uh, I came to get a cigar. <laughs> yeah, okay. And so I went up, and, and, you know, they didn't have much of a variety, and, and I picked up a cigar. And one of these guys standing there says to me, you look very familiar. And I said, oh, really? I said, I said well, you know, we, we spent a lot of money to, to try to get that to happen. <laughs> I said, he goes, you're Tom Tancredo. I said, yeah, I am. I, just, I saw you on Lou Dobbs. He's the driver of this car. I, I said, well, yes, I, I, yes, I've been on many times. Been on, and he says, I saw you debating this lady. And this guy is a, he's speaking again with a, you know, an accent. And, and again, the surroundings are just, they're kind of off-putting, but, but he says, uh, so we start talking, I said, yeah, yeah, I am, and I'm down here at this hotel, and I, I said, do you know when the buses, I said to the guy that owned the place, I said, I see those buses across, do you know how often they run, can I get, because it was about four, well, I, I thought it was five o'clock, because I was still in Denver time, but oh my God, I'm going to have to, I said, do you know how often they run, and, and this guy says to me, I'll, I'll take you, I will take you, I've had this cab here, I'll take you back to the hotel. I said, well, that's great, thank you very much. Get in the cab. This guy's name is Shair Sufi. He's been here 10 years. He's from Kenya. The other guy in the car is Omar Elmi, E-L-M-I. He's from Somalia, been here four years. The other guy is Muhammad Ali or Ali Muhammad. And I, I couldn't get, I didn't know him. I kept using him interchangeably. He's also from Somalia. We start talking. He says to me, when the driver goes, I, I know you. I know your issues. And, and he's speaking, you know, he, he's, he's Muslim, okay? Been here 10 years, other guys four years. He's, among other things, he says, what happened to you guys? He says, why didn't you emphasize, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you emphasize language, culture, borders? <laughs> Michael Savage, oh, the guy is brilliant. He says, Michael Savage is a brilliant man. I listen, he knew, a hand, he listens to everything. He knew, and these other two guys are going, this guy, he always talks about this stuff all the time, you know. And, 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 and he says to me, you lost your way. Why didn't you, what, what happened to less government? He's giving me the speech I was going to give to, you know. I mean, I was just blown away. Absolutely blown away. I kept saying, but, yeah, yeah. How did this all happen? You know, I mean, I decided to go get a cigar. I walked 12, 12 blocks. And I told him when I got in the car, I said, you know, everything, I, I believe, I said, I am a Christian. I believe things happen for a reason. God has, he says, so do we. So do I. This was a point. You know, I mean, I got his email address here. It's just, it, you guys, we can win this. We can win this. We're not alone. It's not just us in this room tonight. It's my point here. Okay? There are millions of people out there who are asking us to do the same thing. And, and asking the question, why didn't you do that? What's wrong? How come you gave up? We have to give them hope. There's got to be hope.
The President of the United States years ago said, gave a prayer. Um, it was June 6th, 1944. What? D-Day. The president was Franklin Del Delano Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt said this that day to the world and to the United States, he said. My fellow Americans, last night when I spoke with you about the fall of Rome, I knew that the moment that troops of the United States and our allies were crossing the channel in another and greater operation, it has come to pass with success thus far. And so in this poignant hour, I ask you to join me in this prayer. In this prayer, a president of the United States asked us all to join him in a prayer. A liberal <coughs> president of the United States. And he said, Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve and this is it, guys. Listen to this. A struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization. Our republic, our religion, and our civilization. A, a president of the United States said this. It is as true today that prayer could be offered every single day. Because that is the struggle in which we find ourselves. It is for the Republic. It is for our religion. It is for our civilization. 